Hi, I'm Uma Mahadevan Velayos. I am an Associate Professor of Gastroenterology at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm Director of Clinical Research at the UCSF Center for Colitis and Crohn's Disease. Crohn's disease can affect the stomach, the duodenum, the small bowel, particularly the ileum, the colon. You can have fistulas, which are small holes that are made in the bowel and can come out to the skin or around the anus or to other organs. Uh, ulcerative colitis is limited only to the colon. So if you have a diagnosis of ulcerative colitis and suddenly you have disease in your small bowel, you really have Crohn's. One of the things to watch out for is abdominal pain. That's often one of the first presenting signs. Sometimes it could just be cramping when they need to have a bowel movement. Sometimes it could be pain all the time. People can get diarrhea. Some people, though, when they're blocked because they have a stricture or narrowing in their bowel from Crohn's or from ulcerative colitis, they can actually get severely constipated where they can't pass gas, they can't pass stool, and actually everything comes out from above where they have nausea and they have vomiting and their belly feels very big and distended like they're pregnant but it's full of air. They can have fevers, they can be anemic, they can be fatigued, but you can also get symptoms outside the GI tract like arthritis, inflammation of the eye, and various skin lesions that are all signs of inflammation. This is actually a very controversial issue. In the past, as, as early as 15, 20 years ago, physicians would tell their patients not to get pregnant if they have Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So we've really come a long way in our ability to manage pregnant women. There are some medications that we absolutely do not use during pregnancy. One of those is a medicine called methotrexate. It's used for Crohn's disease and it's sometimes used along with the biologics like infliximab, adalimumab, and sertilizumab to reduce antibody to those drugs. Methotrexate leads to abortions and can also lead to birth defects. So that's a pregnancy category X. It absolutely cannot be used. If a woman is on methotrexate and wants to get pregnant, she needs to be off of it for at least three months, ideally six months before she even tries. The five aminosalicylates or mesalamine drugs are all pregnancy category B, except one alsalazine, which is C for unclear reasons, but they're all pregnancy category B. They're considered low risk in pregnancy and compatible with use in breastfeeding. So those are medicines we continue throughout pregnancy. The next step up are the corticosteroids. So this is prednisone, uh, medrol, uh, budesonide, or entocord. These are all pregnancy category C. They um, should be used only if needed, and use in the first trimester may have a very, very small risk of something called cleft palate in the baby. And use in pregnancy can also increase the risk of gestational diabetes, as well as very large babies, like unhealthily large babies. There is a lot that we don't know. To get a study that's big enough to have 100 or 200 patients, that's very hard. And that's what programs like Otis are trying to do. And we also have a national pregnancy registry here at UCSF for women with inflammatory bowel disease, where we're trying to enroll a thousand women on these different medications. So we have large enough numbers. Important thing to remember for a patient with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis is that having a disease flare during pregnancy can actually be much worse for the pregnancy than most of the medications we use. Uh, women who have active disease during pregnancy or have higher rates of spontaneous abortion, low birth weight, and preterm birth. They also may have a harder time getting pregnant if they have active inflammation. I think we'll absolutely have more answers within the next five years as the Otis studies and the pregnancy registries from various uh, disciplines are completed. We'll have a lot more patients enrolled who have been on medications, who delivered, we'll study the impact of disease activity, we'll study the impact of drugs, and we'll follow these kids out for a longer period of time so that we can give uh, a more solid answer to the patient, to the mother, as well as to the doctors taking care of them. Because there is a lot of anxiety both for the physician and the patient in giving these medications during pregnancy.